Hi everyone, my name is Isabella Kalb and I am a senior here at the University of Delaware studying wildlife ecology and conservation with a minor in statistical data analytics. This summer, I've had the opportunity to conduct research through the Canner Unique Strengths Summer Undergraduate Research Program. My research project this summer focuses on Borrelia burgdorferi prevalence and ectoparasite diversity in white-footed mice, Paramiscus leucopus, present in ecology woods. The Ecology Woods is located on UD South Campus and serves as a 35-acre research site to faculty and students. White-footed mice are the most abundant small mammal in Ecology Woods and serve as an important host for many ectoparasites, including the black-legged tick. For black-legged ticks, the larval ticks are questing where white-footed mice are foraging, making the species an excellent host subject and vector for disease transmission between vertebrate hosts like the white-footed mice. Over the past few weeks, I've gained knowledge and experience both in the field and in the lab. Each week, we set anywhere between 20 and 50 traps in the ecology woods in the evening and wake up early in the morning to check the traps. When we do successfully trap a mouse, we carefully transfer the mouse to a plastic Ziploc bag to allow for smoother handling. Once scruffed, we weigh the mouse, sex and age, take an ear punch tissue sample, place tags on both ears, and check for any ticks. If a tick is present, then we carefully remove it from the species and transfer it to a vial. Once we have finished trapping in the field, we then head back to the lab to put all our samples away. This includes any ectoparasites found on the mice, ear punch samples, and even fecal samples. We have also processed ticks from this year, as well as previous years, through observation under a microscope. We took note of the tick species and whether or not the tick was engorged. In the lab, I have also had the opportunity to extract DNA from the ear punch samples. This multi-day process involves taking a smaller tissue sample and using a DNEasy blood and tissue kit to carry out the DNA extraction procedure. This process involves lysing the samples, vortexing the fully mix, pipetting the mixture into various collection tubes, and centrifuging using different buffers before eluding the DNA. Once all of this is completed, we are able to run a PCR test to determine whether or not each white-footed mouse is infected with Borrelia burgdorferi. I have also been volunteering at the Delaware Museum of Nature and Science once a week as part of my summer internship. Here, I had the opportunity to learn about museum preparation and dissection. As part of this, I skinned nine different Delmarva fox squirrels dating all the way back to 1994. In addition, I've also spent some time at the museum labeling old avian skeleton sets with their corresponding number written on each tiny bone, which was tedious but fun. I would like to give a special thanks to Dr. Ellis and Scarlett Chiflet, who have both made my summer research experience possible. Scarlett has been an amazing mentor and I've already learned so much from her. I would also like to thank Allison, another undergraduate working in the lab with us. Finally, I would like to thank the University of Delaware Canner Unique Strengths Program for providing me with the funding and the opportunity to conduct my research and learn more about disease ecology. If you have any questions or would like to learn more about my research, feel free to contact me at my email at icalb at udel.edu.